feel all deadly, like rolling out like Jack from Titanic. Kate, get them off. I've asked 500 subscribers. 500 subscribers, that's amazing. Well, actually, as I'm filming this, it's 560. The storyteller in me feels like it makes sense for me to quit right now. It's like she got married, she got a house, she has the kids, the end. The credits are rolling. And it's just really awkward and I'm still here like <laughs> 10 years is career territory. Friends ended after 10 years, you know. I think even the Harry Potter movie spanned about 10 years and then they ended. A lot of your favourite shows only lasted like 10 years or less, like Sex and the City. That's bad. So. That means I should... It's Game of Thrones. What's that? You're not understanding me. They ended. They ended on a high. <laughs> the Simpsons. You could just do a Simpsons. Oh, no. And keep going forever. Like, 30 years in, still there. Granny vlog. Lads, can we appreciate the effort I've made? Look, I've balloons. I have a nice dress on. It's not It's not iron. That's um, beside the point. Let me know in the comments if you agree, but a YouTube channel is like a place, isn't it? it it's... It's a, there's a feeling attached to a channel, a vibe, and, and that the feeling changes by the year. Like I know for myself that I have different feelings and memories attached to different stages and phases of people's YouTube channels. And yeah, in this video, I'm gonna reflect on the past 10 years of my life online. I'm gonna spill lots of tea on my offline life from each season of my of my channel and I'm going to answer some questions you've asked me on Instagram but first I, I just ah oh Jesus um oh my hand's shaking hang on I don't want to get emotional in this stupid video but I just really want to start the video by saying thank you so much for every bit of support you've shown me with views or or any engagement you've given my channel at all because as you'll see when you watch this video everything I have in my life I owe it to the people who have supported my channel. Millions and millions of people have clicked my videos over the years, but it's you, the people who like have followed along for two years, five years, the whole 10 years, even a few months. It's that consistent group of people showing up every time I post content. Like that's why I get to call this my job. And that's why I get to work from home, be around my children. Just know that I lie down at night, every night, filled with gratitude for you. I've just adored connecting with you over the past few years and you mean the world to me. You're a huge part of, of this, this channel. It's not just me talking to a camera on my own as, as it feels like right now, but it's this is a place and we are an internet family. I used to call you as that, but we really are that. Okay, good woman, you held it together. You get to have some tea now. Um, but let's go back to 2013 for a minute. I don't know why I like watching these videos. It sounds like the most boring thing ever, but it's not. This is like the most basic phone ever. It's an old Nokia, but yeah, it's like, it's got like buttons and a touch screen. So it's like, I'm easing my way into the world of phones. So I was a really shy university student. I hadn't a clue. Hadn't a clue how to use a camera, how to edit a video. I've written two young adult fantasy novels and I have ideas for a third and I started it but I just haven't finished. I just don't have time. Procrastination. My then boyfriend, who I was with for a few years, actually encouraged me to, to start all this. He knew I was obsessed with watching people online and yeah, thanks to him, I found the courage to pick up a camera and vlog at a meetup with some YouTubers that I was a big fan of. Um, I thought I'd just take you along with the day and do a, you know, follow me around type vlog. Terrible video, shaky, it's it's private. <laughs> this is what I noticed looking back through my channel. I'm looking at my computer now, it's over here, but so many of my old videos from 2013 are on private because they're mortifying. Like I was putting up all these makeup tutorials when I had no training or special abilities. But back then, that's just what YouTube was. You know, you'd come on, you'd talk about things you were interested in. For me, it was like makeup, fashion, food, even though I was very much still um, recovering from eating disorders. Like I thought I was through it because I'd already been doing therapy while at uni. And um, no, I, I was still pretty bad. And it's really quite painful to, to see how tiny I was and I couldn't see that at all 
I think a big part of me filming at the time was like body checking, you know, and anyway, it was only when I opened up about my skin problems, my acne, that my channel blew up. Teenage acne is not caused by being dirty. It's primarily due to the hormone changes that we all experience throughout puberty, which actually it produces more sebum in the skin. In fact, washing your skin too much can actually make things 10 times worse. So if you're doing it right now, stop it. It's really funny, I put up this video at the time I had a few hundred subscribers, you know, and I had called my channel Mela Knee, like my name split into like, I, look back then nobody used their real names and everyone had all these like, you know, Gen 5410 sexy pants, like those people's usernames. And when I put up this acne video, I started getting shout outs from other creators and they were all calling me Mila, like they thought my name was Mila, which was why I changed it back to my real name. That acne video, like it didn't immediately go viral or anything, it kind of just slowly ticked over, but 2013 basically was just me making a lot of mistakes and learning and practicing trying to like be myself in front of a camera in a room on my own, which is really hard to do. So 2014, that's the year I, I started to blow up online, the year I started making money online and I graduated university into this like, weird new job that hadn't really existed long before that. Next question, how much do you weigh? Why does everyone always want to know? Why is everybody so obsessed with weight? It's like literally a measure of your bones and your blood and your muscle. I remember taking a short break from uploading. I think my camera broke. Someone's fat ass sat on my feckin' camera and I think it was my ass. The little viewfinder thing is so distracting like you know when you're watching YouTube videos and girls are like this oh yeah guys and I got this amazing product it's so good look at my necklace and I went through the first of two breakups with my ex um, two proper breakups but there was like a million mini breakups it was one of those relationships I was going through a breakup it's all good now and we're staying friends and um, you might know who I'm talking about if you watch my videos already but that first breakup lasted a few months and during that time in college like I was vlogging at college and all a lot of them again are private now because oh my god I joined the union and that really brought me out of my shell and I started being like this little activist just back from that uh, homophobia workshop there I'm so I really have to use this platform a lot more for the greater good and I intend to I fully intend to there are so much opinions and passions and I want to express them all but yeah, I'm extremely extremely passionate about equality for all. Everyone deserves the right for their relationship to be recognised the same. I was becoming more outgoing, I was meeting all these new people, other students but like also other YouTubers, I was going to all these gatherings. Every six months we have a moment where we're like, look at our lives. <laughs> What's your favourite thing? So many people. It honestly felt like my whole world was opening up and I was changing very quickly as a person and growing and that was putting a lot of pressure on my relationship at the time. My then partner and I started to really grow apart and our, our dynamic was changing because when we got together he was like way older than me and I was this vulnerable little mess and as I was coming into my own and you know breaking out of our kind of routine of just sitting around watching movies all the time and getting drunk a lot and I don't don't think he liked that so yeah as my channel is skyrocketing there's all this icky relationship stuff going on behind the scenes and I was trying to deal with that while uh getting all this media coverage like television spots newspapers were covering my channel, radio, like back then a viral video was a massive deal. Sneaky suspicion, uh, that's not actually that sneaky at all, that uh, won't be your last time, I'm sure we'll talk again Melanie. Especially if you were from a country, I suppose like Ireland, you know, we weren't, it was not America, there was no TikTok, like no short form, like now your neighbour will have 18 million views on what they had for their breakfast on, on TikTok, but back then it was a massive deal for that many people to like actively click on a video on YouTube. And yeah, this is all happening and I'm trying to write a thesis. I ended up, I think my thesis was about YouTube, wasn't it? Oh, thesis! Weedabix. <laughs> the sponsors of the undergrad degrees. <laughs> I told you. Oh my God. I got a 1.1 
first class honours in my education degree and I am ecstatic over that. I actually got a lot of my subscribers involved in my actual research project which was to do with YouTube as an educational tool and it was so much fun. I got an A, I got straight A's and um, yeah! I'm delighted. So. Because I was so young and I hadn't a clue really about what I was getting into, there was a lot of older people and like companies and um, just people preying on us like young creators and because I didn't know what my time was worth what access to my audience was worth to someone who was looking to cash in on that yeah because I had like no management but this production company <laughs> uh, like they talked me into making this for free mind you for free this entire website full of like uh, makeup looks, hair tutorials, fashion tips, videos about my most used recipes at the time. With the whole thing being like, nothing is sponsored on here. At the time, most creators, like their videos were sponsored. Like it was just really blowing up at that point where all the brands were sponsoring all the videos. And yeah, this production company were like, people don't want to watch advertorials. They want to watch you. And you know, this is this big new thing. Like YouTubers finding ways to let their, their fans, they kept calling them my fans, but they were like, let them gain access to more content for a price. That is like a whole thing. And I do get that, but not for the kind of stuff I make. Like that content I believe should be free for people to watch. But at the time, because this was all new. I had no idea how long it would last. Definitely didn't think it would be more than a few months. And I wanted to have enough money to like, you know, while I tried to find a teaching job because my degree was in education. So my whole plan was to like go into some kind of teaching with adults or whatever. But this production company like promised me the world. They were like, oh, we have access to all these massive audiences in Asia and here and here and on this website. And we're going to really push this. So we'll make this amazing website with all the best camera equipment and like all you have to do is everything plan everything come to berlin for a week and film everything and direct our edits and then yeah it was oh my god so anyway i i got sucked into that which was a huge time suck and that story is to be continued in the a best thing to come out of 2014 though was my drive to use my platform for good causes. I started opening up about my eating disorder recovery and stuff like that, and doing a lot more charity things and yeah. So 2015, that was the year of the collab. My favorite YouTuber of the month. I am so grateful to be here on Melanie's channel because she's been so good to me. I just really like to keep it real. I listen to his accent say something. Hello, I'm Rory. <laughs> Oh, I could no, I should have just done like Shrek. <laughs> Put me in the toaster now. Every time Every we film time. together, yeah. this is going it's down. Been all day, really. Yes. <laughs> it's like a disease here. Yeah, <laughs> green slime on your back knee. <laughs> so today I have my little sister here with me. She's been staying with me for a couple of days. Hi, Hello. Maria. Big yeah. community spirit on YouTube. You probably remember. It really felt like oh, we're all in this together. It was a lovely time in so many ways. I keep giving her special dares and she keeps failing. Oh, I'm the king of East Hello, Sammy. Sammy. Dick Cheney made money oh. off the Iraq war. He's a war criminal who's still on the line. Sammy, and not yet, Sammy, not I even came out as bisexual. It was a year I started talking about so much more as well this on my channel. This one is sexual, just like our last collab. And I wouldn't want anything different. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I, mom, if you are watching at this point, Of course your mom is watching. Fuck off. Made a vlogmas, so like I tried the whole daily vlogging thing, a video every day in the lead up to Christmas, and it nearly killed me. So I want to kill myself. No, I don't really. <laughs> but it is this like constant pressure to make videos. Because, right, when you're making one, you're, you're uploading the other, or yeah. you're editing the other. But you know what? I hate, I hate it. Looking back on the videos I made, that year, like I was not being myself at all. Where did my accent go? Like, why did I start pronouncing pretty as pretty? And I was just, I was talking different, dressing different, acting different, trying to morph into every other girl I watched at the time. And I remember certain conversations I had in therapy about all this whole time because I remember worrying like uh, you know is this going to my head am I like am I a narcissist and like people started using that word a lot more online and it was basically a case of I was thrust into this like having a huge following to me anyway that was a huge number of people I was trying to live up 
to people's expectations of me. I was trying to fill the YouTuber shoes, the role, the like, and all I could do was look to people who were even bigger than me, who'd been doing it longer than me. And I was trying to like emulate them and trying to do all the things that they did and just lost myself completely. Coming from nothing and experiencing people screaming after you in the streets, obviously massive ego boost, but you really start to think, you know, what exactly have I done to uh like like do do I deserve any of this like why why it's just it's so unnatural it all the parasocial relationships and all it's all <laughs> really fucked um and I was so young and in the process of going mad I got back with the ex I'd been broken up with for months I moved into an apartment with him I don't know the whole you know everyone was all settled in a relationship and like had a beige white apartment and I just let this ex convinced me that it was a good idea to get back together silly girl and that whole six months we lived together was just like multiple failed breakup attempts and a lot of conflict because he wasn't working at the time he was there all the time and I was trying to like work from home as well we were both in this enclosed space and it felt like being in a cage with someone you're just really not getting on with and I was then trying on camera to be all hey look at my hair look at this product the channel just kept blowing up and yeah, that production company. So anyway, I have to go up and do some more work on my website. The website came out and I don't know if many of you remember this. <laughs> like, it's like I just stopped talking about it very quickly because I realized that they'd completely lied to me. They expected me to do any and all marketing of this website and essentially turn people away from watching the video they'd clicked on to go and pay to watch other videos. And originally it was kind of, they were like, we'll bring in loads of new people who didn't know you and, and they'll use this site, this beauty, B-U-T dot TV, I think it was called. <laughs> and I'm gonna, yeah, like they were such arseholes to me about the fact that I wasn't pushing it more and more that they pulled the website when people had already paid for it. And it just felt like, I'd gotten sucked into this big, huge scam thing. Like they were always as well gonna get most of the money. Like I was getting a tiny sliver of any profit, but I didn't get a penny anyway off them. They vanished without a trace. They wouldn't reply to me. Complete and utter arseholes. I felt like an arsehole. And yeah, I just tried to bury my head in the sand with that and went through massive breakup with someone that I'd been with for years, you know? So it was a oh and I'd rented out this apartment so I was living on my own for the first time I had all these new friends <laughs> really I'm having one of those moments right now where I'm like how is this my life like every other week I get to like stay somewhere cool or do something really cool or like I just don't understand how YouTube has become this amazing job yeah, oh my god it. I was going to conventions and meeting YouTubers that I had admired for years and years who I loved and I felt very stuck like like I had felt stuck in the relationship earlier in the year but I just I felt stuck like you know people would wanted me to make a certain type of content they'd subscribed for that and like I'd be letting people down if I branched out and I was just in this weird little place where you know I was trying to do the whole YouTuber thing and it was like a, a new limo every week and travel and film premieres and uh... we're in LA uh, holy shit we are here uh, just for doing our hobby like, like if you are thinking at all about making a YouTube channel or starting making videos do like, it just, just do it, it. Just, just do it I met someone and I fell head over heels in love with this person and it was the worst time ever because I was so like not okay after the whole breakup. I was it was very much a rebound situation. I think nevertheless it was like complete infatuation, and I was trying to navigate that when my brain was telling me I was not ready for a relationship at all. So like me being me, I completely sabotaged it. I was insisting like, oh, we should see other people. We should be open, loosey goosey. When in fact, we were both monogamous people. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for love. Sometimes shit happens. But I was like, that knocked me 
so bad and I had no choice but to just keep going with all the events and all the things. Just sort of a bit between moves. Life is a bit sloppy and messy right now. So much stuff going on. I had a hard couple of days there and I was like crying a lot yesterday. I feel like I can't maintain anything properly because like I'm just never in one place. Like I never properly in one place for longer than like a few days and it's stressing me out and I'm really missing like feeling secure in like I don't I feel like I don't have a home right now like I'm living out of a suitcase I'm just exhausted it's like 2 a.m. in the morning and um we all have like really early flights and stuff there like leaving in the middle of the night hello and what do you do when you make a huge mess you make the same mess again but it's even worse the second time so you can actually learn the lesson that the mess was there to teach you all along so 2016 Oh my god. I, yeah, end of 2015, early 2016, I was involved with a YouTuber who convinced me to move over to LA with him and he was like, I'll help you get a visa and I just really need you here right now and I barely knew this guy. We'd literally just been messaging and I've met him once and what? <laughs> what? I moved over. So yeah, it was obviously a trial run, but the intention was that I'd be like staying and yeah, I just, I lost my mind over there, lads. That relationship, hellish LA experience, hellish relationship. Uh, so much that I just did not want to own up to or admit to because I didn't want to be seen as like complaining that I was like in this beautiful place, in this millionaire's mansion. I was so embarrassed by my idea to like move over there that I hardly posted anything. I spent a lot of time you know, I was, what was I doing? Presenting, I was presenting a US chat show. Loads of little things like that that I just completely forget that they happened. But this man was something else. And then this happened. And then of course are the Toby Turner rape allegations. Toby Turner of course has been a huge YouTuber, massively successful for many, many years. YouTuber April F made a very, very large Tumblr post where she accused Toby Turner of sexual assault. The post is called The Truth About Tobuscus. If you want to read it in full, I'll include the link down below. And in the post she describes having an on again, off again relationship with him for five years that was riddled with emotional, physical abuse where he drugged her one time. While we were still involved, all this happened and it was this huge thing online. And I had just right at the same time found out he had been cheating on me the whole time with his ex partner, with other girls. I'd, I'd walk in and he'd be with another girl in the house. Like we were, it was in another situation where I, like the last one, that's why I said it was like the same mess twice. I was like, let's be in an open relationship. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't believe in monogamy anymore. But you know, there was boundaries. I'd insisted that we date other people as a throuple, you know, but he was constantly manipulating me and just treating me like dog shit. Like I'd, we'd be together and he'd, te he'd tell me he'd just texted some porn star he knew to come over and I'd be sitting there just kind of like, okay. Like I had I was like such a doormat. I even made a video at the time called I'm a doormat. <laughs> I'm feeling very weird in my life at the minute. I'm in LA living with some of the most creative, amazing YouTubers. And I feel like I'm floating outside my own body and watching myself live a life that isn't happening, but it is happening. I felt very intimidated by him. Um, and he had all of his own issues, you know, but so that all blew up and I was back in with my dad and my brother and um, what brought me back down to earth was actually something awful. Uh, my dad had a heart attack and when, so when something like that happens to someone so dear to you, it just shakes up your entire view on the world and like, I just, I knew then, look, I want to be in Ireland, I want to be around family. I want to get my shit together and that's when I, I start writing my first book it was called fully functioning human almost <laughs> big almost so yeah I was like I'm gonna fulfill a dream I'm gonna travel loads and I'm gonna date around in a very disconnected sort of way but like I'm gonna just try and get a taste and a feel of what I want and need from somebody and that year felt like a whole decade that's when my sister and I started the Teenage versus 20 something series. So many big world events were going on at that time. Uh, and I have a, like, like a time machine back to it. It's so amazing having a YouTube channel like this. Trump, why 
if Trump could see what I eat in a day, he'd call me a fat pig. Maybe give me a four out of ten. I mean, I'd look her right in that fat, ugly face of hers. So yeah, Trump, uh, this video's for you. You do a live performance of Grab Her by the Pussy. <laughs> Grab by the Pussy. <laughs> Big life events and like really cool opportunities. This clip didn't age well, did it? I was at the Fantastic Beasts red carpet premiere with a blue carpet, but Connie ran over to me and told me that JK Rowling was standing right behind me. I can't breathe. Oh shit. I'm just like moping exactly. around hoping I can get exactly. <laughs> That's JK Rowling. That's JK Rowling. And nearly shat myself. So yeah, that was the year I got settled back in, like living with my dad, my brother, my pets, and my dreams. My dream dreams I was determined to manifest. I started to really believe in the power of manifestation because I kept like focusing on these wrong things and attract more of the wrong things to myself. So I was like, what if I really like focus on the right things? I started to fall in love again <laughs> with an Irish man, a fellow content creator. And again, it was just really bad timing in so many ways. And uh, it was a brief relationship. I kept completely offline, but it gave me more of a taste of like what mattered to me, connection and my roots, you know. Um, he shared this big passion for Ireland in the same way I did. And yeah, that was a big turning point because up until that point, I'd been dating a lot of like people who were just not like me just not like me and I was trying to fit into boxes that just were not for me. Something I'm really grateful for is the past 18 months in relation to my love life because it's been my first chance in my whole life to experience what it's like being single. The thing I'll remember the most about that year is how those um, days of YouTube, it felt like what I imagine early Hollywood parties were like. Mm. Universal Studios would just let a few of us in with our cameras, with no cues. Like at night time, it's closed down. Just us with access to the whole park. And I'm in Hogwarts with like my mates and running around. And just like the kind of memories I'll take to the grave. Just, I felt like the luckiest girl in the whole world. Honestly, my dad and baby have just joined the room. <laughs> Hello. You might hear some toy action, but enter 2017. What a year. This is when, when Thomas enters the picture. It's good timing for a baby to join the video in the background. 2017 is the only year I ever felt cool. Like I, uh, I, I don't know what it was about that year, but like, and I had this little lisp as well. Do you remember I got my first denture and it, I couldn't speak properly with it. A lovely, lovely shout out from Zoella in Alfie's vlog about my sex videos and stuff. And to be honest, I had really underestimated the value of these videos because I don't do them that often. I kind of just make them when the mood strikes or if I have something to talk about. But the amount of people reaching out to me is insane. That year was massive for me. Like I had, I remember I was made an official Game of Thrones ambassador and Oh, that was just unreal. Brienne, would you? Would he? No. Has, he? has he never considered it? I don't think so. I don't think the Amazonian woman is his type. <laughs> yeah, she'd bait him around, wouldn't she? I think he'd have trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Brand's priorities are necessarily <laughs> pulling right now. Get, getting that V or, or the um, D, we don't know. Uh, well, yeah, who knows? Could, could or the tree, I think, <laughs> is, is actually what Bran is into. I don't think the Night King's on Tinder. No, no. Uh, he's too busy, wanted, <laughs> wanted to kill everybody in Westeros. Imagine just swiping Night King. I could have asked them anything, and I talked to them about dating and Tinder and sex. My first book came out, and it got to number two in the non-fiction charts. I was featured on the Irish Leaving Certificate exams, and I recently bought the exam papers because I just want to show my grandchildren that. That's just like, what the fuck? Like, so yeah, Thomas and I got together around, I think, June of that year. And I totally soft launched him, by the way. There was like all these little subtle mentions in videos. As you guys know, I spent like 10 years in two monogamous relationships. And I've been like mostly single for two years, like figuring myself out and like really experiencing what it's like to be with me, myself and I for a while. But you know, I've done it now. I've been there, worn the t-shirt and I'm kind of like, I want something real now. I like one of my friends right now, actually. And um, 
had a little kissy kiss and like uh yeah, it's kind of, I think the whole friend thing in general, when it's your friend, you just have this fear of doing something and then mucking it up and losing them as a friend. But I think when they're just an acquaintance rather than a very close friend, it's easier. This person I'm like kind of seeing talked about that ice cream like last week and I was going, I was losing my mind. I've known him for like 10 years or something. Uh, so a long time before YouTube, there was a decade long flirtationship and it was the first relationship I felt safe enough to actually share anything about it online since you know the person I was with when I started my channel um this it felt very solid very quickly because we knew each other for so long that year I properly got into fitness well like back into fitness but it was for good reasons you know and that became a whole arm of my content and the channel just grew lots of different arms and legs like I started talking about hormones and sexuality stuff like I, I got a lot of shout outs from bigger channels about those kinds of videos and like people were flocking to me requesting this video and that video and that video so I kind of started letting the audience lead the direction of the channel a bit more and it was definitely less makeup routine focus I was doing chatty get ready with me type stuff but not like you know it was very much like I don't have a clue what I'm doing but we can sit together while I do it. Whereas when I started, I was trying, just trying to be someone I wasn't. The biggest thing I did that year, I think, was I made a short film, kind of as a like challenge to myself, but I, I think I was trying to prove myself as well because I was connected to a lot of creators who were so multi-talented and I'd be watching what they were doing and think like, I, I can do that, like I want to try and do that. I was so into film anyway and storytelling and just, I, I've always edited my own videos, I still do. And I just felt like it was like a big challenge. It's, a, it's an innocent little baby inside you. You can't just flush that down the toilet like it means nothing. Stop it! Stop it. it! You have no idea! And so I did that. Um, to the best of my ability at the time, which Anna was under a time time frame, it it won an award at a, at a film festival, which was really but cool. She only fucking went and won the biggest award of the night for her stupid poxy little video. Well fucking done, Melanie Murphy. <laughs> I spent thousands of euro on that video, and so many hundreds of hours. And the fulfillment it gave me was massive, even though there was no return like financially on it. But it, I really quickly realised, like, I couldn't just do that um, and continue to make a living, to be able to buy a house eventually and, and, and stuff if I, if I was just blowing all my money and time on making these huge projects that took a lot longer. Um, it just wasn't a path I was, like, familiar enough with to make my whole thing. But I'm so glad I, I made that because, uh, I don't know, it just made me feel... Like, yeah, I'm not just this one trick pony. And if I had all of the time and the money in the world, I could do amazing things, but alas. <laughs> <laughs> never have I ever been spanked. <laughs> and never have I ever been cheated on. Oh. <laughs> 2018, we're on too. So that, that's when my peak YouTube presence began. And that was definitely one of the best years of my life by a mile. The red hair, the monthly vlogs started. And that was a really cool project that went on for like two years. And I still get people telling me they rewatch those videos as like a comfort thing. Um, but that was a way of me kind of trying to make something bigger and cooler you. than just like a video I could throw together in an afternoon. Having them really does feel like going back in time. It's really cool to have those. I'll cherish those videos forever. That's the year I went over to Spain for a few months. I'm romantic. <laughs> Well, my husband was training to be a pilot and like all of that's documented. I don't think I've ever like... felt that proud of anybody ever. I was just there basking and I was like, yes! Gasping, yes! basking in the pride. Yeah, because like I'm... Because I'm I didn't know my chin could go this it's high. high. <laughs> Writing my novel, my first novel, if only, um, was that year I was winning awards and doing like big, cool photo shoot things. <laughs> Thomas has a poster of me on the wall. This is just the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in yeah, my life. Yeah, I look life. back, it's all like romantic trips and yada, 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 but Behind the scenes, I was actually dealing with a lot of like fears of abandonment and like, my fear of commitment as well. After like I'd had a couple of long term relationships just not go that well. So I was just really 
I don't know, it's just going through an awful lot. Do you think I'm um, a vulnerable person? Like, say if there's something bothering me or I'm, or whatever, do you think I find it easy to talk about it or do you have to drag it out of me, tell the people? Uh, it kind of depends what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I think, yeah, I think sometimes I, I have to... I have to drag it out. Yeah. Because I'm scared. That's kind of when I started to act out a bit after too much drink. But yeah, overall, when I look back on 2018, it was just magnificent. Like, it was, it was so... I was so happy. I was really high on life. I was living with my dad and my brother. We'd rented a new little house. It was a tiny little house in Scaries. And, um, yeah, the whole year was just really, really exciting. And if you were here around that time please let me know special shout out to the ibs flare-ups that came on me that year oh my god i recorded my audio of me trying to do a shite i vlogged while writing my novel on the loo 2019 i can't wait to like come here in the future with like a big bunch of kids and we'll just have them <laughs> all like in the yeah, same we'll, bed we'll all be running around like oh my, my god, god so cool. cool probably my biggest year online up to that point definitely like I started my habits I formed in my 20s series and I really felt like I had cracked it like I'd landed on a formula that worked for me in terms of like the algorithm every single episode of that went down really well and it, the algorithm was always pushing it out to lots of new people what else I launched my me time journal collection that year and they like sold out three different times they were really cool it was fun to just try like a new project you know my debut novel came out that year about one woman's access to her parallel lives and that was just such a lifelong dream come true happy publication day thanks <laughs> basically i'm gonna read him chapter one of my book. i just wrote this enormous novel look at all these words <laughs> it would have been an all right wedding Lovely pictures, shitty best man speech, excellent cake, and not awful consummation. But the marriage, as my best friend Reed had put it, like pulling teeth for three years tops till the inevitable crushing divorce. Reed Williams' honesty was iron in a world of fragile reassurances. I was gaining loads of muscle that year, and I was still posting lots of videos with my sister. I quit drinking that year. I don't think I put in enough whiskey. Give me more. Tronsies, I was planning my wedding. I turned 30. I also made a bloody documentary that I premiered at Buffer Festival and I so, so many things went wrong with that. It was such an absolute shit show. I'm not an organized person, but I was trying to like actually be the, you know, the producer and the director and all of the things. And it was so hard. Miracle that I got that done. And yeah, I was like still again, traveling constantly, going to all these incredible places that were on my bucket list and simultaneously trying to document it. And that year, the whole YouTuber hamster wheel of like never taking a proper break and not having any proper time off for years because bear in mind back then I used to try and I couldn't even relax watching a movie because I felt like I have to tell my audience what movie I'm watching right now. I shared everything for years and especially like up to that point I just was so in the clutches of like the serve the algorithm gods thing and I, I just could never relax because you're told when you're a creator like you always have to be pushing for growth pushing for growth and because I was finally you know getting the kind of views I always imagined that like oh I'll feel successful when I'm getting that many views consistently um but I didn't feel any different or better I just felt way more stressed um because there was just way more expectation of myself maybe it wasn't like coming from you guys but I was so overly concerned with how a video was performing, you know, compared to the last one or trying to constantly think of the next one while I was working on this one. And it was just this like nonstop thing. And I just burned out really bad vanity metrics. Like, what is it all for at the end of the day? And I had to remind myself, like, what, what was I originally drawn to YouTube for? It was the connection. It was making stuff. It was fun. I vowed that you know, 2020 would be different. 2020 would be, oh God, 2020. I started sharing content that year with no idea, obviously, what was coming. We all know what came. I have to admit, it's weird to be able to like look back on 
pandemic lockdown life. My least favourite thing is just how much conflicting information there is online. There's too much. There's an overload of opinions and information and government people disagreeing with each other and scientists disagreeing with each other and people policing each other because of incompetent leaders <laughs> who are giving very unclear messaging. But at least I can look back on 2020 and also remember as the year of our cancelled wedding that went viral. Um, we got married in like a little registry office because we were due to get married literally days after the first lockdown was announced and which is just so weird. That was such a crazy time. Months of planning just down the drain. I'll also always remember that as the year I started writing Glass Houses, my second novel, which just means so much to me and it's over here on a shelf and just the amount of support I've had on this has been mind-blowing. The, the types of messages I get about this book kill me, like beautiful messages from people who've read it or listened to the audiobook and thank you, thank you so much. So much of my soul is in this book and you'll only know if you've like read it to the end what I mean. Writing that was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life because it was not just a lockdown, oh no, it was my first pregnancy. And, you know, family losing their minds to conspiracy theories and it was a mad year. In 2020, I had my first birth. Um, I experienced obstetric violence and a, a horrifying hemorrhage, really tough recovery from birth. Um, but yeah, like my first baby came into the world and my little son and he changed my life forever. Um, so that year, while it had a very different feeling, I suppose, when I was looking back at videos, a very different feeling to the feeling that had been on my channel prior. Um, that was like the dawn of like a new me. 2021, matrescence. <laughs> project reset. I spent that year trying to recover from the shock of the pandemic and the shock of birth and it was all about breastfeeding around the clock and learning about that because what a thing our bodies can do. I was trying to focus on self-care and getting my strength back and riding and riding and riding and riding when I had any free moment and reconnecting with Thomas when I could. Um, just having a baby just puts so much pressure on your relationship and it really tests the strength of your love. Because he takes up just so much energy and time that I feel like if you don't like plan out certain sections of the day to be a couple again and not just parents, then it is very easy for, like you just spend hours just staring at the child <laughs> and then they be here and we'll be talking. But I won't see her. <laughs> when you've been making content for a long time, you're inevitably gonna evolve and change and um, you're gonna let people down. Like I gained a lot of followers when I was pregnant who were expecting like family, baby content all the time. And I chose not to share my son's name and face. That was just like a boundary we had. And so, you, you know, I was like, I'll share motherhood. I just can't share certain elements of it. Um, well a lot of it actually like it's turned out that it's very tricky to be a content creator who doesn't share their child when your child is always with you both of my children now but anyway back to this year so like yeah I, I remember I was losing views and followers kind of after the kind of excitement of the birth wore off like I remember getting really disheartened that my views were going down because you know, it's like, it happens all the time. A woman has a baby and it's like, all right, whatever. You're not interesting anymore. <laughs> Nobody cares. And a lot of other mam friends of mine online uh, have had that feeling and has had have had the same thing happen to them. So I was dealing with that. And like my sister and I had a big falling out. There was this big conversation and then she stopped talking to me and I couldn't even meet up with her because of the lockdowns to try and resolve it. And she was such a huge person in my life that that was just like massively affecting me that whole thing one of my favorite videos i ever made came out that year though the one where thomas did this like month-long anniversary present for me that video i just love it so so much it gives me such fuzzies because him doing that for me at that time when we were all like stuck in the house all the time it was such a big deal um what the fuck <gasps> did you change what was in here no 
I said to you really recently that I wanted a locket. Yeah, and I had to play it really cool because I bought you one like a month prior and I was afraid you were going to buy one online. And I, I got him his hair transplant, sorted all that out for him as like a, a, a gift because it was just bothering him so much. I get to be a pro vlogger today. The confidence that gave him was like huge and he opened up to people on here about his insecurities, helping so many men. Like I get messages even still from people who are stumbling upon that video with their partners and their partners are just asking questions about the whole procedure. Oh, I deleted Twitter that year. Dele I deleted Twitter long before it became cool to leave Twitter. But really I wasn't being cool. I was branded a fascist <laughs> because people on Twitter loved taking two and two and making seven. Like I defended people's right to protest and people were like, well, I don't like these people that were at that protest, so therefore you're saying this, and oh my God, Twitter used to drain so much of my time and mental energy, and I hated it so much, and I was so f felt so free when I got rid of it. Finished my, my novel, Glass Houses. Um, it's really funny, I look back on 2021 like as if nothing happened that year. <laughs> we are beginning our house hunting journey. And same with 2022. Like, 2022 turned out to probably be the biggest most challenging year of my life. After beginning our house buying journey the previous year, we bought our first house, moved in early 2022, started a massive renovation, which will be ongoing for years because it's just such a big project. It's such a, like a 50 year old house, like everything needed updating anyway, but just like also we wanted to be reflective of us and 2022, like living with a, a kid in a building site with a book coming out while I got pregnant again and had a really difficult pregnancy. It was such a difficult first trimester, completely ruined. So many of my marketing plans for glass houses, just like, I was like, I can't do anything right now. I'm trying to raise a child, trying to grow a child. This house is insane, toddlerhood and oh, throw in um our, our wedding because we replanned our original wedding that had gotten cancelled during covid and had that and that was a massive massive thing mel was just out of a relationship and she thought if she dated thomas he would break her heart so she didn't go there <laughs> i posted some of my biggest videos during 2022 as well like that year i just I had this feeling the whole time going through that year that like, I'm crap. I'm Everything that I do online now is crap. No one cares. I have no identity. I've lost my identity because, you know, I have kind of like, I'm a, I'm a mother now and that has changed me forever. And I, I've not really known how to bridge the gap between past me and future me. Like I'm in this weird in between stage still, but in 2022, I just, I didn't know what to be posting because my whole day and my brain revolves around my kids, but I don't want to, to be a mammy vlogger um, only. I love sharing motherhood stuff, don't get me wrong, but I just, I, I, I wanted to feel like that kind of fully rounded online presence that I used to have where I had all these different types of content and it was always interesting and exciting. Cause I get very bored of talking about the same kind of thing over and over. Um, but the thing online as well, like I've noticed it with um, reels and TikTok and stuff, is like if you don't, if you're not known for a thing and if you have something pop off and go viral, people click onto your page and they're like, what does this person do? <laughs> and you know, they see my Instagram is like all these different things and it's not a, a great strategy for growth. But what matters to me is like, the community and I'm always kind of going in the right direction. I'm always gaining followers while I'm losing older followers who maybe followed me years ago, don't want kids, don't relate to me anymore. And that's natural and that's good and that's fine. But it's it, it, 2022, that was like, I was, I was like, oh God, like, what do I do? Do I just like, do I keep doing this? Do I pivot my channel? Because now we're here, we're in 2023, we're halfway through the year, somehow another new baby. I'm still breastfeeding, still renovating the house. I'm homemaking. I'm I'm trying to rediscover fitness and and health and stuff after a really unhealthy start to my second pregnancy. Um, and I, I have been opening up more than ever before recently. Um, content 
is, and engagement are still doing really well. But I, I have this weird feeling like I should be stopping now. Like now's the time to leave. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Do I pivot the channel and, and start doing, like I've wanted so badly, desperately to start doing video essays. Um, and I keep saying to myself, I'll do it once my baby is bigger, when she's more manageable and like I can actually, she can be minded. So I have more brain space to really do that because uh, you have to do a topic justice if you're going to do a video essay on it. But then I miss making monthly vlogs. I, I miss having all the documentation of stuff like that. Um, do I get a normal job and just treat this as a hobby and post the odd video for like my hardcore people? Um, do I start a Patreon? Do I, what do I do? Because like I, I, I cannot do everything. I can't even write right now. Like I won't be writing another novel probably till next year or the year after. I'm hoping to try and write a children's book this year um, before Christmas. But that's like other than keeping the channel going, keeping my children happy and healthy and the house stuff and just trying not to go absolutely fucking insane. I just feel like I can't do more than, than what I'm doing. And I do feel like it's a crossroads moment though. Like if I'm gonna quit, now's the time I should quit. And I know that obviously like there's a portion of you, like maybe a couple thousand who would be really sad if I did but then I know a lot of people just really wouldn't care because there's like so all these new hot young things who are full of talent filling up these platforms so like I feel a bit like a granny and a dinosaur um, but you know I'm still making really good money I'm getting cool brand deals all the time um it's still very much a great job a, a job I'm very privileged to have um so it's less about because it feels like a job now that's the thing it does feel like a job it's not like this fun little hobby the whole process of going from idea to uploaded video is a lot of work I'm wearing a lot of different hats in terms of the planning the setting up the actual filming the presenting the editing like there's there's so many roles that I'm doing and I know that there's a lot of other media jobs I could do but I'm just kind of in a place where yeah I just want to keep sharing I want to have fun I want to share I want to connect I want to keep working from home and being with my kids lots so I don't know they say you should never make a big decision if you're tired or anxious well my friends I'm postpartum still and I'm always both of those things most days so I'm I'm yeah I'm trying to remember that you know, there's no expiration date on fun. Trying to look back, reflect, think about what this place was like when I started and, and look at how I'm measuring success. Um, because success for me, definitely like the most fulfilled feeling I ever have gotten from uploads is when the comment section feels like a place. That is when I feel successful, not when I have like a viral video and it's just a lot of random people finding it and coming and going so the numbers definitely don't matter to me as much now but the numbers are important in terms of making money because how much a brand pays you is based on your views so yeah being a youtuber is just such a weird thing and next portion of the video is the q a so let's do that i am a lot more active on my instagram but i put up this really old picture there recently and I asked just for like questions related to all this um so I'm going to answer a bunch of them now is there anything you wish you had done differently as far as what you chose to share online consequently is there anything you didn't share or worried about sharing that you're now like that wasn't a big deal at all I was really worried about sharing like the full story about why I quit alcohol which is a recent video I was really nervous about that um not a big deal so many people relate the comments have been amazing. Um, I was really scared to come out online. I came out online like before everyone's coming out videos was a thing. Like it was back in like 2015 and um, I was terrified. But like in my real life at the time, a lot of my friends, my gay friends, my bi friends were like, why do you not use your platform for good causes? Um, and I was just like, yes, I should, I really should. A lot of things though I do wish, I like there's certain videos private where I went into way too much sexual detail 
Um, I sort of wish I'd been a bit more open in certain areas because it was almost like I was living a double life sometimes. You know, I, I was presenting one version of my life online and then offline was very different. And then it's kind of when I'm watching back through those videos, I'm just like, oh, like a scene in a vlog will remind me of all this other stuff that was going on. The video I made when all the stuff went down with Toby Turner, like I kind of wish I hadn't made that video. Um because it blew up and a lot of people came to my channel thinking that I was the person who had accused him of abuse, of rape. Um, I don't know why they thought that. They obviously just didn't watch the video, but they were just, I just, it got my name out into an area of the internet for all the wrong reasons. And it just attracted like some awful people to my channel. But I remember at the time feeling like I had to make the video because I'd been mentioned in like other videos on the topic by other creators. People knew that I lived with him. I was very much online like we're roommates, but we were, you know, romantically entangled. That whole experience was just really awful and I hated seeing my name attached to such an awful subject and situation. Was there a defining moment when you knew that Thomas would be a good partner to share that creative life with? Honestly, from the start of when we started dating, like, he was just really interested. He would ask all these questions. He seemed very um, on board from the get-go at like being in my videos and he was able to be so himself on camera. I think a big thing with me actually being with Thomas was like knowing that like there was a spark between us before I even had a YouTube channel. So, cause I always had this paranoia that people who I was dating or involved or texting or anything were like, I don't know, they had ulterior motives or wanted to like use me to grow their own audience or whatever. And that's happened to people very close to me where like they've dated people who they wanted that person to like launch their Instagram for their fitness training and whatever. Social media is so not Thomas's thing. Like he doesn't use social media and really like posting stuff or anything himself. And he's just so incredibly supportive at every stage he always has been and I just love him so much and are you ever going to do a full-on autobiography? <laughs> I probably will when I have a lot more wisdom like I just can't believe I wrote a book about myself and my life when I was in my mid-20s what was I thinking? I know a lot of you like really loved that book um, and I know it was like probably valuable for like teenagers but <laughs> it's so cringy for me to look at now. Have you considered hiring an intern? No, um, I absolutely need help. Like you should see the even shit show today behind just trying to get this video done with two kids in the house. I cannot tell you how helpful it would be to like have someone to work with on all this stuff and have much more of a routine and structure and like someone to just keep me going. I think I'd be able to post a lot more regularly, but I wouldn't enjoy it because I'm a control freak and a perfectionist. And also I just am not organized enough to hire somebody. I've never had like staff. So many of my friends who get, who have same, like similar size channels and kind of similar views and, and all that, but they've like so much, so many staff members and, and I just, I don't know how they do it. Wish I was that person, but I'll never be that person. I just, I, I'm like, no, this is my thing. Let me do my thing myself. Your honest opinion on the Sacconi Jolie family. This had loads of thumbs ups. I think it's because my first vlog ever on YouTube was at a meet up with the Sacconi Jolies and they were hugely important to me. I felt so connected to Anna. She shared about her eating disorder recovery. Like the first time she did that, like I was kind of really struggling with food and she's the reason I first reached out to a therapist while I was at university. She was extremely influential to me and I just wanted to be like her and I was just when they had their first baby and I used to love watching their vlogs and I and they made me really be like yeah like family life that is extremely important to me and um I just felt very at home on their channel and and yeah they they, they changed my life I don't think I would have started YouTube if it wasn't for them because they were Irish people doing YouTube I didn't really hadn't seen that my honest feelings and opinions on how the direction they've gone since then in terms of like with their kids and stuff being on camera so much and um like 
I don't really follow it. I don't really watch it. Um, I don't. I don't really have much interest in other people's children. Um, I don't know if that makes me sound awful, but I just I I do check in the odd time and watch stuff just to see how they're getting on, or I'm interested in like their thoughts and their lives as parents and all that as content creators. But I don't really care for child centered content. Obviously, like I don't make it myself. I don't like to support it when I see people doing it because I just wish the children could be like kept anonymous on the internet. But the thing with them is that when they started sharing their children, they shared the birth of all their children and um, so much about their kids' personalities and like seeing them, little cute babies and toddlers, made so many other people like me really excited about having kids and it was really helpful content and um I just have such uh, an understanding of the position they've been in in terms of like this is their career it's all they know um their kids grew up with cameras they probably got to an age where like they really wanted to be making all these TikToks and all that stuff that they do now and I know as parents like Anna and Jonathan allow them to do that and 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 stuff um and but that's their choice and this is the thing I don't like I don't judge other parents for doing things differently than I do my honest opinion is if I were in their position probably would have held back a lot more about Edie's journey just because of the nature of it and and how dangerous the internet can be and how awful some humans are who are accessing that content and also just of how much Edie's feelings, opinions, everything will evolve and change as she grows up and um, yeah like you know it's obviously it's just different strokes for different folks. Um, that's their kids and I trust that they are doing what they believe to be best for their kid and I just have nothing but uh I don't know love for for them um I stopped following Jonathan on Instagram mainly because uh all of the posts were about the kids and I just get a bit uncomfortable seeing posts that are like where it's just the kids like just someone's children in the post and it's not like necessarily a family thing or whatever but yeah I don't know that's just that that's my honest opinion like I'm not um there's no like big drama and I'm not ever going to be jumping into the pylon that they have experienced. I think it's just awful how much trolling and horrible shite that they've had to deal with. I've had my own fair bit of that, but like nothing like what they've had. On that, what's a part of the job that you absolutely dislike? Uh, the trolls, the the nasty people, the people who make up stuff about you, the shit that people post on gossip websites about you that is like so like so much projection and so much lies and so much twisting of words and twisting of situations and reframing of things and like there was a couple of sites where there was a lot of gossip and rumor about me that like the first one I used to look at like other YouTubers and I would like get together and like look at our pages and um it was just really really badly affecting me but it was at a time when I was going through so much trolling behind the scenes with like going to the police all the time and um hiring people to find IP addresses and like I was going way way down a path of like caring so much about the perception of me I guess and um I just realized that like not only are people allowed to not like me, people are allowed to hate me. People will hate me. People, will ha I, there's people I don't like. I believe certain rumors or gossip. If like someone in my family tells me, "Oh, did you hear?" Blah blah. I might just be inclined to believe it. And um, that's always going to happen if you're in the public eye. And and people will have their own opinions on like my intentions, my relationship, my opinions on politics, every single thing like that. So you just have to not care. And I had to let go of that, like caring about all that stuff. And there's like a really big gossip forum online these days. And um, I won't name it because I don't want to send people over there. It's a cesspit. But there's been a couple of times I've had to check that because of like people telling me that like my kid's name was leaked or whatever. And um yeah, like the stuff that I saw, it curdled milk, like the, the 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 cruelty in some people's hearts and like 
the the thought that people spend their free time doing that and like talking about me and saying this and that or whatever random opinions or really weird lies about me as well that is not a nice side of this as a job obviously because you just have to ignore it and get on with it but there's always like like a little something in the back of your head of like some people are going to read this shit and believe it you know you see it with your own eyes you like people who think you have Munchausen syndrome that little voice will sometimes whisper just like there's people who and then the rest of you just has to be like, so what? Like, I don't like certain people. Should that matter to them? No. Um, but that's just gonna come with it. Like, the bigger you are, the more of a bigger celebrity you are, the crazier the rumors become. Like, if you look at like A-list celebrities, the stuff that's written about me in like gossip forums is written about them on the front of trash magazines. And they just get on with it. I'm just like, you know, if Taylor Swift can fucking live her beautiful life, I can live mine with these very sad, miserable people uh, choosing to, to talk about me. Do you wish you would not have a social media job now that you're married and have a family? Is it hard to find a balance to turn off being a creator and being present in the moment with your loved ones? Funnily enough, <laughs> it's not hard to be present in the moment with my loved ones anymore because I don't pressure myself to document everything. Like I don't share 99% of my day-to-day -day life, my relationships. Like I don't sit and make videos with my friends anymore. I don't do a monthly vlog. So I'm not vlogging at like family gatherings and friend gatherings. And so much of my romantic relationship is offline. Like when, if we do a date, like I don't feel like I have to share it. and because I don't actually share my life with my kids. Um, I share like tiny slivers of glimpses of moments, but like that cuts out a lot as well. So like I do have a better boundary there now, but I do sometimes wish that I had a normal job just temporarily, just to like make ends meet and pay the bills and stuff like that. Just, I, I almost wish that every mother in the first five years of her kid's life, until the kids is like in proper school, school, um, had the option to just not have to work and be supported by the government because it's so hard. It is a full-time job to raise children. It's so, so, so incredibly difficult and wonderful, obviously. Like, you always feel like you have to preface talking about how hard motherhood is by like, but I love my kids. Like, obviously, I love my kids, but I don't love having to try and juggle making an income with motherhood because it kills me like my head is pounding right now I just there's so much going through my head of like I've got two sponsored videos to film next week and I'm trying to like my brain is like this all the time so yeah having a job where I just I don't know work at my computer doing whatever or having doing call center type thing from home like I want to be at home I want to be with my kids I want to have money but you know for people interested in starting a YouTube channel what do you need you literally just need your phone and a passion for sharing and and the balls because I didn't have the balls for ages and you just have to find the balls and do it. Have you ever made a video sharing something private that you now regret? Oh, I regret my whole Snapchat. Do you remember Snapchat? I used to Snapchat in the middle of like the most insane things that I just really wish I hadn't have done um, often when I was drunk before I'd quit alcohol um, but I remember one night where I was out with a bunch of my mates and there was this whole situation with this group of guys bet the crap out of my friend and I was there sitting like drunk sobbing to the camera live posting about it and like I used to do stuff like that all the time there used to be just like no boundaries it's like I was part of the internet machine and I just had like everything was content everything is content like so many <laughs> situations like you know my dad's heart attack certain sexual situations I was in um oh absolutely there's a lot of stuff private monetarily how has your YouTube career evolved from then to now and are AdSense and sponsorship still your primary sources of income or has writing overtaken that now? No, writing was never a primary source of income. Writing is, is, it's very hard to make a living from writing. You have to be churning out books and getting massive advances to, um, for that to be like your full-time thing. Brand deals can pay very well depending on the brand. And like my work with Wella, I did a few jobs with Wella, like the hair dye brand. Those one job was like a year's wages do you know what I mean a lot of brands have much smaller budgets obviously but um 
still like you you know one youtube video the fee is usually like a month's wages so um while you do a lot of work I make a lot of things for free and a lot of the work that I do is unpaid. The money that I make from brand deals is put in a company and used to pay my salary. A lot of the things I've posted over the past 10 years were not sponsored or um, whatever, but the, the, the brand money has to be enough to justify you being able to do this as a job, do you know? Otherwise, like if I was in a full-time normal job and had kids, a brand offering me a few grand to make a video um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't even have time to do it, do you know what I mean? So there's, you have to be in that sweet spot where like it's kind of your job, so you have the time to make this content for the brands. But yeah, financially, like AdSense is a lot better nowadays. Like what a video, what 50,000 views will pull in from AdSense now is way more than it was a few years ago. And I do be raging because I, I remember when my channel used to get a million views every month, nowadays that'd be a few grand per month just from AdSense, let alone brand deals or whatever. But now I would probably get like, I don't know, a fifth of that amount of views per month because a lot of my bigger, more viral videos have kind of like slowed down in their being pushed out by the algorithm. Um, and I don't post nearly as often. I used to post like every week, if not twice a week. And now it's sometimes like twice a month and then more often on Instagram as well. But um, sponsorship fees have kind of generally stayed stable for me. I've been getting a lot more brand deals the past handful of years um, and they, they don't seem to be drying up. I think maybe it's because I have a certain following that a lot of other people wouldn't have, like people of a certain age bracket and also like they're more consistent viewers. So maybe that's more valuable to brands. I don't know. Or maybe is it because like other mothers follow me and like they tend to have more money than like you know, a 15 year old would have. So like if you're an 18 year old influencer, your following might be less valuable to brands. I'm not really sure, but I'm not going to complain about it. What potential paths do you see for the next 10 years? There's a lot of things I want to do in the next 10 years. I want to do a master's degree. I want to, yeah, write more books, write children's books if I can. Um, I would love to have enough brain space to like launch a company like a different company there's but there's my problem is there's too many things I'm interested in I'm passionate about and I've got too many ideas I what I need is someone who's really good at like figuring out how to help me focus and hone in on things lecturing I'd love to lecture would love to have a podcast um my sister and I had a podcast deal with Spotify and it was for such a huge amount of money and it would have been so cool and we'd re we'd started it we the first episode recorded and everything um my sister Jessie B you know like we the whole we used to do the teenage versus 20 something videos and this would have been like us talking about subjects with like the eight-year age gap and anyway we were buzzing for it and then the pandemic happened and it kept getting pushed back because we couldn't meet up with the producer and film in the studio because of the lockdown rules and then a new creative director came in by the time everything was kind of back to normal and was scrapping all of the half finished non-finished projects and doing all their own projects so we we're just devastated about that and I, I get sad every time I think about it but um I still would love to have a podcast it just feels very oversaturated and I don't know why people would listen to my podcast like it would have to be a really good idea and not something that's been done to death because you know I feel like there's a million podcasts now with like two girls and having the the girly bants like yeah I, I just also think that the older I get the more interesting I will be I just think older people are cooler and more interesting and I have way more to talk about I'll have more interesting takes and insights and stuff so like maybe that's something for my 40s but that's still within the next 10 years so yeah um comment down below if you're cool with me just trucking along as I have been um if you were doing if you were me would you quit now and leave on a high not necessarily on my highest high but like I've been doing pretty well and I'm just I don't know
I feel like it makes sense for me to quit now. It's like the writer in me, the storyteller in me feels like it makes sense. The storyteller, in, the storyteller in me feels like it makes sense for me to quit right now. It's like she got married, she got a house, she has the kids, the end. The credits are rolling and it's just really awkward and I'm still here like... <laughs> if you were me, what would you do? Would you keep trucking along? I think I need to end this video. It's probably like a million years long, but if you're still watching... Um, thanks and if you've been supporting me thanks 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 a million thank yous a billion thank yous thank you will never be enough that's the end awkward wave this is my awkward video you just love the new awkward video endings <laughs>